talk about saving your baby's cord blood. All this hype and all this excitement that you've been hearing about stem cells in the last five to ten years is based on the hope and the belief that the physicians and scientists that are involved in stem cell research hope that stem cells may be the future of a lot of our medical therapies and medical cures. The way stem cells would work is this. Right now, if you have a heart attack or you develop insulin-dependent diabetes, we have drugs that would help your injured heart uh, beat stronger or faster, and we have drugs that either look like insulin or make your insulin last longer. The hope for stem cells is that in those two circumstances, we could just inject you with stem cells and the stem cells would go in your bloodstream, go to the injured heart and repair the injured heart muscle, or go in your body and redevelop the cells that secrete insulin and therefore you'd be cured of your insulin-dependent diabetes. Uh, stem cells are cells that last forever. As an embryo, you start out as a ball of stem cells. Uh, and these stem cells are what's called pluripotent. Pluripotent means they can develop into anything. So some stem cells develop into the heart and some into the brain, some into muscle, and some into skin, and some into internal organs. Once you're born, stem cells only do one thing. Uh, so for example, the cord blood cells only make blood. Scientists have had a lot of success in getting stem cells to develop into various types of cells in the lab. The uh, hurdle that we have to clear is how do we just inject them into you and get them to go into your body and develop in your body what we want them to do. Uh, those two studies that I talked about, the uh, heart attack, uh, getting stem cells, and the insulin-dependent diabetes, those are ongoing studies right now. Here in our Texas Medical Center at the Heart Institute, we have a study ongoing right now where men and women who have had heart attacks are having stem cells injected in their heart to see if it will regrow new heart muscle. Cord blood cells, for example, are already set up only to make blood but six months earlier they were pluripotent and they could do anything. So there is some hope that the cord blood cells may end up being more pluripotent or more likely to be able to talk to and developing other types of, of cells. Uh, if the science doesn't develop any further from where it is right now and you save your, your baby's cord blood, then you have essentially on a shelf, you have a vial uh, of stem cells ready to have a bone marrow transplant or probably for your baby or other siblings of your baby. Um, of course, the real coup would be if these cells end up being much more valuable to do other things with. If you choose not to save your baby's cord blood, another option for you is to uh, give your blood to MD Anderson. MD Anderson uh, usually has people at our hospital that could, uh, could take the collection, and somebody waiting to have a bone marrow transplant could, could use your baby's cord blood cells uh, for that transplant. Um, as your provider, I don't really know where the science is going. I don't know if in 15 years they'll just say, hey, it's more complicated than we thought and we're just not going to be able to get there. Or if the science could even leapfrog what I'm talking about and they don't need the cord blood. Um, they can take a stem cell from some other part of the body and can clone it and get it to do uh, whatever it is that they're trying to do. It is important enough and it's exciting enough that I think it warrants you and your husband spend some time thinking about it, looking at it, learn as much as you can about it to make a decision that's right for you with the science that we have uh, today. The two main vendors who have been around the longest that I feel the most comfortable with are CBR and Viacord. CBR has more than 50% of the market. Uh, I've been to their facilities. I think they're a very reputable uh, group. They have a very good website. It's uh, cordbloodregistry.com. I think that uh, their website is a good place for you to go and look around. You can take an educational tour. There's no obligation for you just to go visit the website. They won't try to call you unless you ask to be called. Uh, I hope this answers some of your questions. I would be happy to answer more questions for you at your next visit.